Good morning and welcome to Without Walls Kids. This is different. I'm here in my house and you're in your house, but we can still be together, kind of, and the Holy Spirit is with you and he's here with me. And did you know this is Easter Sunday? That's a very, very special day. In fact, it's I think it's the most important day in history. About 2,000 odd years ago, something happened on this day that changed the world forever. And you might say, well, what are we celebrating? I think you kind of know, but I want you to come outside with me and we'll find out. So here we are outside, and in my basket I have some beautiful coloured eggs that I'm going to hide in the garden for Stephanie to find. Yes, well, Stephanie, these are actually not chocolate eggs. So why don't you come inside and I'll tell you a story. Okay. Hello, here we are, back in from outside with our eggs. And now we're going to tell the story. This is about this, this is the story of Jesus. So we're going to start with this. This one? Yep, start with this egg. And Stephanie, what's inside it? There's a donkey. There's a donkey and a scripture. What does it say? John 12, 12 to 15. John 12, 12 to 15. And it says, The next day a great crowd in Jerusalem heard that Jesus was coming there. These were the people that had come to the Passover feast. They took branches of palm trees and went out to meet Jesus. They shouted, Praise God! God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. God bless the King of Israel. Jesus found a colt and sat on it. This was as the scripture says, Don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Your king is coming, and he is sitting on the colt of a donkey. So sitting on the, coming into Jerusalem on the donkey meant that Jesus was the king, and he came in peace, and the people were worshipping him. Okay, so the next one is light pink, that one. What's in this one? So let's just put that over here. Here's our donkey. Some money. Some money and some money. And the scripture says... Luke 22, 1 to 6. So I'm going to Luke 22, 1 to 6. Now, there was a man called Judas Iscariot who was one of Jesus' disciples. And he went to the leading priests and some of the soldiers who guarded the temple and he talked to them about a way to give Jesus to them. They were pleased and promised to give Judas money. Judas agreed. Then he waited for the best time to turn Jesus over to them without the crowd knowing it. So Jesus was betrayed by one of his disciples for money. So the next one is this one. And what's inside? Inside is a cup. And the scripture says... Luke 22, 14 to 20. 14 to 20. When the time came, Jesus and the disciples were sitting at the table... This is talking about the Last Supper. He said to them, I wanted very much to eat this Passover meal with you before I die. I will never eat another Passover meal until it is given its true meaning in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus took a cup. He gave thanks to God for it and said, Take this cup, take this cup and give it to everyone here. I will not drink again the fruit of the vine until God's kingdom comes. 
Then Jesus took some bread, and he thanked God and broke it and gave it to the apostles. Then Jesus said, This bread is my body that I am giving for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way after supper, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup shows the new agreement that God makes with his people. This new agreement begins with my blood, which is poured out for you. So after the, after the supper, Jesus and his disciples went to a, a garden nearby called Gethsemane. And we'll find the next part piece in this one. So these are praying hands. So in the garden, is there a scripture there, yeah. Stephanie? John 17, 1 to 5. John 17. And if you read John 17 in your Bible, it tells how Jesus prayed to God. He prayed for his disciples and he also prayed for the people who would believe because of what the disciples had told them about him. And that's us. So in chapter 17 of John, you can read about how Jesus prayed for you and for me in the Garden of Gethsemane. This one, that's And we'll do this one too, and this one too. These kind of go together. This is a piece of leather, and this is this is a crown, crown of thorns. And what is the scripture there? It says John nineteen one to two. So after, after Jesus was betrayed, he was arrested and brought before the governor, whose name was Pilate. And in John chapter 19, it says, Then Pilate ordered that Jesus be taken away and whipped. The soldiers used some thorny branches to make a crown. They put this crown on Jesus' head and a purple robe around him. So Pilate spent a lot of time with Jesus and he knew that Jesus was innocent and he tried to release him but the Jewish leaders stirred up the people to demand that Jesus be crucified so in the end Pilate gave Jesus over to them and well, we're going to find something in here so this is the these are the, the spikes that they drove into Jesus' hands and feet when they crucified him on the cross. What's the verse, Stephanie? John 19, 16 to 18. And it says, So Pilate gave Jesus to them to be killed on the cross. The soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, Jesus went out to a place called the Place of the Skull. There they nailed Jesus to the cross. This one is next. No, that's the last one. This one is next. Alright, you see that? It's a dice. And the dice. It's a dice. And what does the what's the verse? John 19, 22 to 24. And it says, after the soldiers nailed Jesus to the cross, they took his clothes and they divided them into four parts. Each soldier got one part. They also took his tunic. It was all in one piece of cloth woven from the top to the bottom. So the soldiers said to each other, we should not tear it into parts. We should throw lots to see who will get it. This happened to give full meaning to the scripture. They divided my clothes among them and for my tunic they cast lots. Sphere. So Jesus was crucified on the Friday and when the sun went down on the Friday that was the start of the Sabbath day and they couldn't do any work and in order for them to look after Jesus' body and to wrap it up they needed his body to come down from the cross on the Friday so they, um, what does the scripture say? That John 19, 31 John 19 
So the soldier came and to, to Jesus where he was and he found that he was already dead, but just to make sure, he took a spear and it says that one of the soldiers stuck the spear into Jesus' side and at once blood and water came out, showing that Jesus was dead. So, we have a piece of piece of linen cloth and what scripture was it? John 19, 38 to 42 and it says later a man named Joseph from Arimathea asked Pilate if he could take the body of Jesus Joseph was a secret follower of Jesus because he was afraid of the Jews but Pilate gave his permission so Joseph came and took Jesus' body away Nicodemus went with Joseph. Nicodemus was the man who earlier had come to Jesus at night. He brought about 40, 75 pounds of spices. This was a mixture of myrrh and aloes. These two men took Jesus' body and wrapped it with the spices in pieces of linen cloth. This is how the Jews bury people. In the place where Jesus was killed, there was a garden. In the garden was a new tomb where no one had ever been buried. The men laid Jesus in that tomb because it was near near and the Jews were preparing to start their Sabbath day. So that Jesus' tomb was a, like a cave carved out of the rock and what's in there? This is a stone. A stone because, what does it say on there, Stephanie? It says Luke 24, 1-2. On Sunday morning, the first day of the week, before it was light, the women came to the tomb where Jesus' body was laid. They brought spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance to the tomb. So this great big stone, they were wondering how are we going to go into the tomb because of this massive stone, but when they got there they found that the stone had already been rolled away. And we have one more egg. Stephanie, do you want to open that one? See what's inside. And there's nothing inside. It's, this is empty because when the women went in it says, they went in but they did not find the body of Jesus. When they were wondering about this, two men in shining clothes suddenly stood beside them. The women were very afraid. They bowed to the ground. The men said to the women, Why are you looking for a living person here? This is a place for the dead. Jesus is not here. He has risen from the dead. Do you remember what he said in Galilee? He said that the Son of Man must be given to evil men, be killed on a cross, and then rise from death on the third day. Then the women remembered what Jesus had said. So the tomb was empty, and that is what we are celebrating today. Because Jesus rose from the dead, he defeated death, and he won forgiveness for us. So death no longer rules over anyone who trusts in Jesus. Because he has life, we have life. That's really something to celebrate. In John 20, 31, it says, These things were written so that you can believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Then, by believing, you can have life through his name. So, Happy Easter. And that is something we'll have celebrating. So, we pray that you can enjoy your day today with your family and knowing that Jesus died for you and that he rose again and that you can have eternal life through Jesus. Well, it's time for us to go. So, well, Stephanie, would you like to go outside and find some real chocolate eggs just for fun? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Goodbye. Bye.
been busy doing some drawing or some baking, baking something yummy. Did you get to make your belt of truth? I hope so. Well, today is a really special day, isn't it? Today is Resurrection Sunday when Jesus came alive. Today we're going to learn about the true meaning of Easter and why we celebrate Easter. I bet you love to eat lots of chocolate on Easter and go for treasure hunts. That is fun, but we need to know the real meaning of Easter and what it means for us who love Jesus. Because Jesus died on the cross for, for the wrong things that we do that sometimes make his heart sad and our mummy and daddy's heart sad because we've done something wrong, well now we can have forgiveness for the wrong things that we've done and Jesus has made a way for us to be a part of God's family. So we can now have a relationship with our Heavenly Father and with our brother Jesus. Isn't that amazing? That is the true meaning of Easter. And that's, that's why we celebrate Easter. So, we're going to hear God's Word from the Super Book, the Bible, where God's Word is always true. And we're going to hear about what happened to Jesus and what he went through. But now we can celebrate because Jesus is alive and he's alive forever. All right, so go and get your Bibles. Okay, come on now. Okay, this is Jesus. Jesus was on his way to a town called Jerusalem. A large crowd of people heard he was coming and they were so excited to meet him. Can you turn to mummy or daddy and make an excited face? That's it. The people were so excited that they gathered big palm branches and waved them as they shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna! And that means save or rescue or saviour. They were so excited that Jesus was going to be their saviour. These people knew that Jesus was God's son and they wanted to make him feel extra special. After Jesus and his friends made it to Jerusalem, they had a special supper together. At supper, Jesus told them that he was going to die soon, but this was God's plan for him. Jesus' friends were confused and sad to hear the news. You see, there were some leaders who did not believe Jesus was really God's son. They were angry because many people were following Jesus. So they decided to kill him. They beat Jesus and nailed him to a cross. And that's where Jesus died. Jesus never did anything wrong, but he died on the cross to take the punishment for all the wrong things that you do and that I do. After Jesus died on the cross, his friends wrapped up his body and put him in a tomb. A tomb is a big hole in a cave. Then the people didn't like, like Jesus, put a huge rock in front of the tomb and they had soldiers guard it. They were scared Jesus' friends would come and take his body away. Can you sit up straight and tall like the guards standing outside of the tomb? I bet you're doing a good job. Now, we're all going to clap together. Well, kind of. We're going to clap three times. One, two, three. Okay, do you think you can do that? Okay, ready? One, two, three. Jesus' body had been in the tomb for three days. When some of his friends came to visit him. Now, can you make a surprised face? I bet you're doing a really good job. 
Excellent. That's how Jesus' friends looked when they got to the tomb because they found the huge rock rolled away and Jesus was not inside. Suddenly they saw an angel and the angel said, Jesus is not here. God has brought him back to life. This is why we celebrate Easter because Jesus loves you so much that he died for you and he came back to life. Jesus is alive. That's the, that's the good news. Jesus is alive. And now we can be a part of God's family if we believe in our hearts that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Can you shout, Jesus is alive? Wow. Jesus must really love us and our Heavenly Father for God to send his own son to, to die on the cross so that we could now have life and relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ and our Heavenly Father. That just goes to show that God really loves us and how much we must mean to him that he sent his own son to die for us. That's really special. So now, I've got some activities that you, you can do. Would you like to write a love letter to Jesus? Just to say thank you or um, that you're really grateful for what, what he's done for you on the cross. And yeah, you can just say thank you and how much you love him. I, I've done one for Jesus. So just do a love letter. You can ask Mummy and Daddy to help you. There's also some colouring in up there if you want to do this one or this one. He is risen. He's alive. Don't forget to go and tell your friends that Jesus is alive and now we can be alive because of what he's done for us. Okay, so now I'm just going to say a little prayer. Okay, ready to bow yet? Your heads, all right. Dear Lord God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. We are so thankful and grateful for what you have done. Thank you now that, that we can have life and, and have a relationship with you and be a part of your family. Thank you for your love and your kindness towards us. We love you very much. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, now I hope that you have a really good rest of the day and a good week. And don't eat too much chocolate. I'll see you soon. Oh, and just remember our memory verse that we're learning? Put on all of God's armour, then you can remain strong. Ephesians 6, 11. So next week we'll be learning more about God's armour. Okay, have a blessed week. God bless. Bye. We thought that in, uh, in the memory of a wonderful Glory Camp moment of the Glory Glory that we would do Songs with Dads doing the Glory Glory. And we've got a wonderful little tribe of helpers here to show us the moves today. So get up, get up with your family and here we go. We're going to do the Glory Glory. Okay. Put your whole head in, put your whole head out, put your